Are you guys ready? All right, let's make some trees. So this is a tutorial I've promised a gazillion, gazillion and one times um, on making trees, on sculpting trees. Um, now I am going to make a semi 3D sculpture today of um, a tree that will come out full 3D as a handle and then kind of adhere to the mug as a, as a relief sculpture. You can do the whole thing as a relief sculpture, just make it a little flatter. Um, and that can be attached to like platters or just the side of the mug, you know, not be a handle. Um, any of those, it's the same, same process really. So first of all, um, this is a um, hand-built mug. It is very soft and pliable, okay? So you want to be really, really, really sticky um, for the things to attach to it. Um, if you are throwing, you will probably want to wait just a little bit, just so that it's it's workable, so that you're not damaging your mug as you're sticking things to it. But don't wait until it's leather hard. I don't do anything leather hard. I work it with it when it's very, very wet. It, it moves and it wobbles. Um, so I'm going to roll a few coils. Um, I don't know if you guys are aware, but if you roll the coils with your fingers, you're going to leave uneven marks on the coil. You may not care, especially for a tree, but if you want an evil, if you want an evil coil, <laughs> if you want an even coil, <laughs> I'm tired. Um, you're gonna have to roll with kind of the palm of your hand. And I've seen some people even do it with their forehand. Um, I'm not uh, that coordinated, but. <laughs> so you're going to make a few coils, like five or six. Um, about this thickness, maybe, you know, half of the thickness of a pencil. And what I like to do with it is, um, I like to use a silicone mat with a um, tree texture. You do not have to do that. Um, you can actually use wood itself that has been split, like a log that's been split. You can texture it on that. You can sit there with a needle tool and just individually, you know, engrave the little wood grains, um, but this is cleaner and faster and I prefer to use it. So I am going to take my little coil that I just made and I'm going to roll it on this mat. Now I don't roll it along the pattern, I roll it like across the pattern because it then picks up more texture. It does not need to look realistic because you're going to be binding a whole bunch of these coils together. So the individual imprints, like, you know, if you want a, a circle on one of them, it's not really going to show up. So it doesn't really matter. All right. Um, I store my coils in a wet paper towel, which you cannot see here, but um, here I made a whole bunch of them. I didn't want to bore you to death. Um, and then I just kind of put them together and I decide on how many I want to leave based on how thick I want the handle. All right, I am going to twist it like this, but not to the very end. So I'm gonna let this part be loose. And try to get the coils apart a little bit. I'm not very coordinated. I don't know why everybody thinks that I am, but I'm not. Okay. So now, because it's a handle and you want it to be comfortable, I like to flatten it a little bit on both sides like this. It doesn't really take out the pattern, at least not a lot. And now I'm going to form a handle for a mug. Now, where's my water? Eh, okay. I am going to try to find my seam. And if I can't find it, that means I did a good job. And I'm going to mark at the bottom where I want to attach my tree. I'm also going to mark at the top, but not the very top because your um, tree is actually going to kind of fan out. It's not going to reach the very top. Let's see if you guys can actually see what I'm doing. Now I'm going to make this part sticky. Now, by the way, I don't always slip and score. I'm just being good for the video. For the, for the video. <laughs> um, a lot of the times I will just wiggle it on and just um, kind of trust the clay to be sticky enough. I use porcelain, so it usually is sticky enough. But just in case if some of you guys are using other types of clay, um, I'm going to show you the slip and score method. Yay. Okay. All right. 
So I'm going to go ahead and attach it. And as you can see, I am kind of just wiggling it into place. Because my cup is so fresh and my handle is so fresh, they will just attach. It's not going to come off. Now this part here is where it gets trickier. I am going to, and I'm not really slipping and scoring this, I guess I could. No, I could go like this. I am going to attach it here and then I'm going to let the branches kind of fan out. And then, because it's still a functional handle, I want this guy to be a little higher. I am going to kind of wiggle on the part that of the trunk that touches the, the cup. All right. Here we go. Okay, so now it has this kind of like a Medusa looking, you know, pattern to it. And this, by the way, you should always kind of put your hand on it, shape it so it's comfortable to hold. This is when you can stretch it a little bit or, or um, you know, just change the angle of it. All right, so I'm calling it a day with this shape and uh, I'm making sure that sometimes you get little cracks and they actually look really cool as a tree but you don't want them to go too deep so sometimes I will kind of just wet the trunk a little bit especially as I'm working with it so remember you're not just making a tree you're making a functional handle so you definitely don't want anything to be falling off at any point that would kind of ruin the mug and or potentially make it not very safe to use okay so now we're going to make it look like a tree. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take little pieces of clay and I'm going to roll very fine coils with it. Now for this, you can use your fingers because the coil is so thin that honestly, like one finger is enough. Very, very fine. You can run it on the mat if you want. Um, at that point, I usually don't really bother. And I'm going to start attaching them to the branches that I have. Now, right here, I made sure that it overlaps, that it goes on top of the big thick branch. And then you just smooth it in and kind of just press it in so it all lays semi sort of flat, only because of the design. I mean, this is, this is a mug, you know, um, if um, I was making a platter that wasn't supposed to be a functional platter, I might let it stick out, you know? If you really wanna go like full 3D, um, just be careful because they'll be really, really brittle as you dry. And um, yeah, that's, that's kind of it, you guys. I <laughs> just keep going like this. It really helps to look at some pictures of real trees and just kind of see how they grow. They usually go laterally and then they bend up, um, I guess, for the light, right? So they, they reach out to the light. And you just keep on going and you make them tinier and tinier. Oh, do you guys know how to um, make a really, really thin coil? I think I have a video on that somewhere on my YouTube channel, but um, I'll do it again. So if you take a wet sponge and you take your tiny little coil and you start rolling it on a wet sponge, the sponge will take away a bunch of clay and you end up with like a really, really tiny, really, really, really thin um, coil. You guys will have to put up with me. I am <laughs> honestly exhausted. It's uh, I think around maybe midnight here, maybe 11 something, but I just chased my insomniac children to bed. I don't know if they're asleep yet, but I had to do this for you guys because I promised so many times that I would do it. And there's no real science to doing this. I mean, you just try to make it look as natural as possible. Um, I like to attach leaves to the end of these branches. So, I guess I can even hide errors in there. Like um, if a branch looks unnatural, I just, you know, put a leaf in there. Um, 
but some of you guys I know are amazing, amazing painters and artists. Um, some of you guys don't just do pottery, you do actual drawing and painting, so you should have no trouble in figuring out where these branches should go. Um, I'm a little bit more challenged than not. Um, I wasn't trained as an artist, so I, I am still, believe it or not, working on my painting techniques and just literally finding models, like finding trees and animals and just looking, trying to figure out where things go. Like I am still learning. It's been a couple of years now. Um, am I going on 10 years? I don't know, probably not 10 years, but maybe eight. Um, I'm not good with time. So, but it's learning every day. And I, I don't think that's ever going to change, to be honest. Okay, and I just keep on attaching smaller and smaller branches as I go. Um, and to make it, to make the attachment look seamless, I simply, like I said, put the branch on top. Eh, look, it broke off. On top of the existing branch and smoothen the transition. Um, that's pretty much it. I am not gonna bore you uh, by going over all of them because um, that's gonna, it's probably gonna take me a good like 20-30 minutes. It's not a fast process. Um, you know there, there might be a faster process. I have not discovered it yet but I literally will go through and I will fill in the branches and just keep on adding and adding and adding until the tree looks the way I want it to look. So you can see the difference between this side and this side where we just started, right? Just adding a few branches, that's all it takes. Um, if you guys have any questions, let me know. I'm gonna put this video on my YouTube um, so that you can copy it and send it to um, you know anybody else who might need this for some reason, but you know, maybe they're making a project or whatever. Um, that's it. You guys, um, I hope this was helpful. I feel like I need to go to bed, but <laughs> that's not happening anytime soon. <laughs> you guys have a great night. Um, like I said, if you have any questions, just type them in the comments, um, either here or on YouTube, and I'll be happy to answer them for you. Have a great night. Bye-bye.